but nice to nice to get to be here with you again and and to um I'm seeing some familiar faces. I, I there's a few folks who I who I know very well here who I've and then there's a few folks who I remember seeing the faces some years back when I visited out there and and um yeah please feel free to turn on your cameras if you can because it's it's nice to see that for us all to see each other's faces if you want to. Um so look I'm gonna just start off by playing a little music for you and just to just to get into the into it a little bit from the musical point of view. Um, in in the chat, you sh um, Ari can post. There's a there's some words, um, and they'll be the first words that come up on the page. So Ari, if you wouldn't mind throwing that in. Great. So if you click on that link that just came up in the chat, you'll get um, you'll get a, a PDF. Are you able to open it up? Okay, great. So the very first song on there is Odecha uh, from Hallel. Odecha ki ani tani vatehili Yeshua. listening. I wonder if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment in the chat and, um, and write a note or two about what's, what you're noticing about what's going on right now. What, what are you, what's coming up? What, what are you thinking as you hear this music or as, what are some thoughts? How did it go? Or, or, or describe musicologically what I'm doing. <laughs> Whatever you feel. Let me turn on the chat myself so I can see. I like that. I have no idea.
great. So yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm, I like seeing all, what you're writing here. It's nice, you're, you're writing all kinds of nice things. <laughs> um, and, and that's nice, that's nice for me. And also, you know, I'm thinking, one of the things that I'm really trying to do is, is to take an, a melody that's, that's familiar to many people. The melody is not familiar, but the words are. Um, this is a, this, this, these words are from Hallel, from Psalm 118. Sometimes you might hear it as, Odecha ki anitani shua. Do you know that one? Right. Um, are there other ways that you all sing it? Probably a zillion of them. And so forth. Such a beautiful, all these beautiful melodies that come from, from Odecha. And um, I like my ver my version is more new agey. Rena says. <laughs> Um, you know, so I, what I'm looking to, to do when I write a new melody is to, is to look at the words a bit and to think about how they, what they strike in me. And, uh, so in this case, these words are, are, um, part of the roller coaster of, of Havdalah, the emotional roller coaster. It's, I'm sorry, of, of Hallel and, and really of all of the Psalms. The Psalms work, um, are, are really an emotional up and down without end. They say the, the, the very most challenging parts of life and they say the most highs. So in this, in this particular one, it's like, it says, Odecha, I'm so thankful because, because God, you, you brought me down, but then you brought me back up, right? And um, you answered me. And then it says, Evan Ma'asu Habonim, the stone that the builders threw away. Um, which may have been me or may have been us, it suddenly became the, the cornerstone of the whole temple, of the whole building. Hayitale Rosh Pina. And then it says, Me'e Tashem Hayitazot. This, wow, what a, what, a, what a beautiful, beautiful thing this is. It's wondrous. Hini flat be'enenu. And, and then it goes on, and it's like, it starts kind of lower and then it gets higher. Zehayom Asadunai Nagila Venis Mechavo. This is the best day that God ever ever made <laughs> let's be let's you know let's be happy and sing and and be full of joy and then literally in the very same sentence uh, the same breath it says ana hashem hoshiana god save me now god save us now right so there's <laughs> kind of incredible um like up and down this is indicative of how all of all of halal is it's just this uh, and, and how all of life is this, uh, this sense of as soon as something good is happening, you realize that just around the corner, there may be a challenge. And when you're in the challenging times, like many of us are, um, we know that there's something right around the corner um, that's, uh, that's going to be okay. With the, the operating, the operating um, theory is gamze ya'avor, this too shall pass, right, which is... Uh, those are the, the 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 three words that that frighten any uh, any rich person and and uh, and uh, make make the poor person very very happy. Uh, this too shall pass. So um, I just want to give I just want to play you a few songs and just give you a little window into how it is that I think about the words and how that translates into. Uh, into uh, music, and then um, later today, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a song that I'm just working on, that that I'm just beginning to work on, and then you're gonna um, you're gonna help go through the creative process with me. That okay with you? Okay, great. So, um, if you wouldn't mind, will you turn to page four of your of your sheet? Let me play one more new song. So that you can just see the way that that I'm working creatively these ways to sort of dredge up old words, but to reframe them in 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 music. Um, that is the way I'm hearing it. So if you go to page four and you see the words that are familiar for many 
for many Jewish people from the from the Kaddish. Okay, it's this. If if you uh, take the first the the Kaddish and you start um, halfway through. Joey, I, just so it, it doesn't come monotonous and you have to keep reading the screen, I, I'll maybe I can point out a, a comment or two because Margaret Buckman says she hears the piece of uh, intimate devotion and like uh, Appalachian folk tunes. And it always, 
when I've heard your music before, I do hear different influences. So can you talk about that, what you just sung and what the kind of the musical influence is there? Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. So, you know, the, um, first of all, the words are, are several thousand years old in Aramaic that come up many times a day in, in the Jewish prayers. And, and, and the, 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 the words are, are um, here's how we give our Yid Barach, Vishtabach, Yid Pa'ar, we give brachas and we give shvachim, praises, and we give Yid Pa'ar, songs that, that glorify, we give songs that lift up, we give songs that lift further up, Yid Naseh, we give songs that Yid Hadar, that make Hadar a sort of splendor, our, and our songs um, and rise all the way up the ladder of song, all the way up into the heavens, right? And um, they make a great halal. These are the ways that we try to give our, our blessings to the, to the Holy One, right? This, these are amazing word, old words. <laughs> and it says, but yet there is something that is le'ela, min ko vircha tavashirata, something that's, that's even above all of our blessings and songs even above all of our, our songs and our nechamat, our comfort, words of comfort. Um, that like we sing down in this world. Um, and that is that, 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 that infinite oneness that we're, we're all trying to reach through our songs, through putting our beings and our prayers out into the world. Right. And so like Ari is saying, when, when I, um, when I approach um, these these words, I'm thinking. Well, what does my song sound like? You know, and uh, my my family on one part of my family has been in uh, the United States since before the Civil War in Milwaukee, and um, so if, you know, from from Milwaukee, I glean these kinds of sounds. Because when I was growing up. kinds of blues sounds that everybody was playing when I was in all the blues bars when in in the 80s and 90s when I was a teenager and starting to play music and um, and so all of that blues and then all of the the, the folk music and the Appalachian sounds that these kinds of sounds uh, that that I heard on the on the radio all the time because uh, my mother loved to um, to listen to uh, the country top 40 every week and uh, and then there's all of these other sounds that um, that come from the the Jewish side of life Right, so these kinds of sounds were the ways that I heard it um, in the um, in the Hasidic Shtiblech of, of Milwaukee with the Tversky Hasidim, um, that uh, w which was the Hasidic family that married me and my wife, and um, and my grandfather was a sort of a quasi Hasid of, and um, and so you know then the, uh, the 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 cantors that that I grew up hearing. We're 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 doing that 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 kind of sound, but just a little bit bigger. They'd be like, <laughs> very like this this beautiful tasteful stuff, and um, that the kaddish is usually um, it's 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 oftentimes it's said um, in nusach, so meaning. Like if say you're coming up on the Musaf service in your in your shul, if you have that in your shul, um, right there, um, you might go. Um, right. And that's that's like the way that you would say um, you would you would sing it in Nusach, which is like the old prayer chant, right? And um, so when when it comes along to me, I have all of these sounds in my ear, and I'm thinking, 
it's COVID and I can't actually get together with a minion, <laughs> like for real, which is you're supposed to say this with a minion. Um, and yet in my head, I'm hearing this, this glorious chorus of people of, of a minion plus many hundreds, maybe, maybe someday all of us will get to be in a room and sing this together, right? Where it's just like, da 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 So Ari, to answer your question, like these, for me, these, um, you know, these melodies, um, these, the melodies and the words kind of come from my entire experience of, of music. And they, they're, they're, they're aimed to help do what the words are saying, which is take all of our, all of our prayers and lift, and lift them up together. So I wonder if anybody has any questions and you, you can use the, um, the raise your hand uh, function in at the bottom of the screen in reactions. And you can uh, click raise your hand if, if anybody has a question. It's always nice to hear. While people are, are chatting questions, a question related to what you just said. So um, do you do you feel like if you like, would you do all your melodies, obviously not in one service, I don't think, because that'd be a long service. We could talk about that as a different question. But if you did this melody for one of your Kaddishes, it do you feel it's in, is it in the Nusach um, of the time? Or are you kind of going against the Nusach and more in a different way because of the, the way the song makes you feel, the melody makes you feel? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't feel that this is exactly in the Nusach, but it's close to the Nusach for that part. So, um, okay, so, so what are the first words of the Kaddish? Yitkadal, you mean? Yeah, so you go, say you do that, say you go, and everybody says amen so you did your nusach and then you go so it's in major and it just kind of flows out of the Kaddish. Or if you're in, in the other, the, the final Kaddish, um, which is usually you would hear going like this. Um, sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> And then I just hear everybody going, Oh, the Elamin Kol, Virchata Veshirata, etc. So it kind of flows out of the Kaddish. One place I wouldn't do this, though, is in the Mourner's Kaddish, right? The, the Mourner's Kaddish has the same words, but mourner, the Mourner's Kaddish I, I would want to keep always as a, as a monotone because it's supposed to be Yikadal, Yikadash, Meirabah. Um, you know, it has to be easy to say for anybody who needs to say the, the, the Kaddish. But in the other places, our goal is really, really to lift, lift it up. Yeah, Mildred, is there a question? Please unmute. Yeah. Mildred Tabalski. I don't know how to, oh, okay. What I wanted to say was a lot of times when I go to services, they do that so fast, but you don't even hear the tune. And this was very understanding and very nice to hear a tune because they just like mumble it through and that's it. <laughs> right. so it's, this is it's, completely different. It's interesting, yeah, to, to just consider the fact that these words, which we say so often, many, I know for me, for, I, I said these words for probably 38 years before I considered <laughs> um, what they were really saying. They're quite beautiful, right? And, 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 and like you're saying, Mildred, the, the, 
part of the whole point of um, of the song is to is to call attention to how beautiful the words are. Um, although in the end, the words, uh, as if when when you sing with a community and you sing make something really beautiful, the words also are superseded in some ways because everything that the words are trying to say is being better said by the melody anyway. You know, so that's part of spiritual music is just this. Um, you know, the fact that the music itself actually often says the heartbreak and the joy for you without even having to um, to resort to your intellect and, and, and figuring out what it means. Yes, Ruth Roth. Yeah, I wanted to say in, in my synagogue, the cantor, when they, she does the Chatzai Kaddish, that's when she chants. She doesn't do Nusach, but, it's, but she does chant. And then when we say it later, you know, for memorial, for your site, it's really recited in a monotone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah. Are there any, any other thoughts or, or questions at the, at the moment? Na Na yeah. Nancy wants to know about um, maybe musical instruments in the service. And uh, I mean, I, I would assume you have a certain perspective on that. And has that changed actually for you uh, over the years? Yeah, I, I personally don't use um, instruments at all on Shabbat. That's just my, we're at my tradition. Um, and I, I, although I have such, um, I, I, I definitely think it's, it's really great when it's used because, and used well, um, because it brings so much beauty. Um, in my, the way that I grew up, and the way that I still operate is that on Shabbat is like, for me, a very nice time to, kind of go into acapella land um, where we're just singing together and we're all kind of we and where I get to just just let go of all of the things that I think about on instruments and 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 instead just um, just exist in the world of song. Um, but but for many for many folks having a guitar or having a drum or having something even a whole band can really um, can really bring it alive and just make it so beautiful you know I've seen it time and time again that Shabbat has been greatly beautified. Uh, but like with anything else, it takes work and practice. And, you know, any of you who are in here who, who try this kind of thing know that you got to work at it. And uh, that's, that, that work pays off. So there, was a, there was a side question. What about Kabbalat Shabbat when it's still light out, like during the summer? Are you okay with using instruments then? Or do you really try to keep no instruments in the summer? I just, I just don't, I don't usually do it. But there, there was a tradition, the, the, um, uh, several hundred years ago, the the Mittler Rebbe of Chabad, the, who is one of the the early the maybe the the third the um, he was the he was one of the early Chabad Rebbe's um, was uh, had had a capella that was called the the Mittler Rebbe's capella, um, a, a group of musicians who would play um, for Kabbalat Shabbat, like you're saying, Ari. And uh, so there's there's long standing tradition of 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 um, of starting off Shabbat uh, like right, right until the bell toll you know the the hour arrives um, playing instruments and they, there's a whole song that's called that's named after the Mittler's Rebbe Capella and um, and uh, they they say that the instruments are are like the outside that that if there's a divine light coming down the singing is like is is on the inside of the container that holds the divine light and the the instruments are 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 actually keeping the the container together they're on the outside of the container holding it so um there's this sense of the singing being having like a little bit more of a close connection but that the instruments are what kind of hold can hold it all together and nice. uh yeah. so i i like that nice. i love i'm deeply in love with instruments yeah karen Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, nice to see you. And I am thinking about following up on the Appalachian question. Oh, great. Uh, and also on in December at the concert, somebody was talking about Americana as sort of part of your musical tradition. And I associate these things with, with the sort of major key Christian music. And I'm curious about how that sort of plays into your thinking about it because I, I find enormous spirituality in harmony um, and singing along with your melodies 
Um, but I also, I guess I think about finding joy in minor key sort of old style, maybe old country Jewish Nusach. And I'm wondering yeah. if you're thinking about minor versus major keys. Oh man, what a great question. You know, let me, let me just think about that with you a little bit with the guitar here, right? So um, in, uh, in, in Eastern Europe, um, first of all, the farther west, the farther to the east you go, the less harmony there is overall. So when you're in, um, you know, mo most uh, most Arabic music is he and most Indian music, it's not there's not very much harmony at all, if if at all. And as you get further towards towards the west into Europe, you get a little bit more harmony, and oftentimes you get a little bit more major. And by the time you get to Germany and Lithuania, you get major, major, major. <laughs> Um, and tons and tons of harmony. And usually the German melodies are less interesting as melodies, but they're more interesting as, as harmony. And uh, that's why all of these great choral conductors came from Western Europe. Whereas when you get farther into Eastern Europe, you, the, the harmony gets less sophisticated, but the melodies get more transcendent. And as you get farther into the, to the Far East, you have no harmony at all for the most part, at least in most of the tradition. And, um, but you have the most amazing melodies of all, <laughs> right? And, um, and, and more rhythm. Germany, where my family is from, you know, rhythm is not the forte. <laughs> it's, you know, but harmony is, you know, and, and these major keys. And so many of the things, many of the, much of the music that, that the old composers in Germany was, were writing, like, Shema Yisrael, these big major pieces, right, that were meant for, for big choirs to sing them, and, 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 um, um, Tzadik Katamar Yifrach and you can hear, I mean, you can hear all of the, the harmony that wants to be sung to those melodies, right? Those are meant for harmony, and they're very major, like you're saying. And um, as you go farther into Eastern Europe, you get more... And as you get further into Eastern Europe, it starts to go... And these are the kinds of scales that are more and more minor that um, the Germans couldn't handle. <laughs> Whenever they got a hold of those those heights of sounds, they would clean them up and make them into more 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 majorish um, or or more clean minor. Um, they didn't like all of the disorder. Um, but, you know, in Eastern Europe, they loved the disorder, and they, they relish it. It's always improvised, all of those sounds. In Germany, they'd write everything down, right? So anyway, this is a quick, quick little bit. To, in my mind, we're, here we are in the United States, or here I am in the United States. <laughs> You know, and um, and for me, it, all these things are part of my my family's past, and part and they're they're all from the farthest to the farthest reaches. They're all included, and uh, it's nice because we're a little free now. We can we can be a part of all of those traditions, and it's a big yes and. Okay, uh, so I like harmony, and I love the major and the minor, and the far stretches of minor. Um, it, to me, my it's what's important is that it it that that it uh, touches the heart in some way right and or that it open, lets our souls rise a little bit so look let i'd like to um to uh to share a song um that that i'm just starting to work on because i'd like for you to be able to be a part of the unfolding of of a, of a process okay so will you look at page two in your document and, and ari can refresh the link if if possible And um, you should see Psalm 30 there. You seeing that? Okay. So in Psalm 30, there's um, 
you you may have seen this usually in davening in in the morning it comes up right before baruch she'amar it's like the very beginning of psuke de zimra the first the first thing that we get that the the initiation of the singing to god that we do um on a daily basis is this psalm right and it says um mizmor shir chanukat bayit le david you might have heard if you were in in davening you might hear Right, that would be the new sach that would happen during the weekday. There's other ones that happen other times. Okay, and if you you may have heard a Karbach song that, that is in there um, two thirds the way down that goes. Hashem Ekra El Adonai Eschanan, etc. Um, man, I want to sing all of these things at length. Um, but um, I want to ask you a question. If you were to be composing music to this, to this psalm, Will you read the psalm and tell me and, um, what would be, what would, what line would you choose as the refrain? So I want to actually um, just divide really quickly into um, breakout rooms so that you all can, you know, meet each other for just like th three minutes, okay, and have a quick debate about that, okay. And and so I, it's what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to read the psalm together and you're going to say I think that it should be this line should be the refrain, okay, and then say which line it is, okay, and then report back to us when you get back in in about three or five minutes. Okay, um, this will be a chance for you to say hi to somebody as well. Okay, so you're going to break out the rooms right now. Yeah, if you don't. How mind. many how many rooms do we want? Like, um... uh, so there's about 200 people. So, yeah. so um, about about 55 rooms. I think we scared some people away the minute you told me how to go to a breakout room. Uh, you don't it's have okay. To, you can you just have to go. You can just stay here if you don't want to. It looks like the maximum I can do is 50. That's fine. So we're going to do it. Okay. Say hi to each other for a second. It's nice to see another of uh, some other punam. Okay. Is it working yet? I can't tell. Um, it says the rooms, and I'm trying. Do I assign it? Rec do I? Yeah. You I can automate. I tell you what. Has anybody gotten an invitation to go to breakout rooms yet? Okay, you know what? Let's not do it then because we don't have too much time left. So instead, um, Nancy Kaplan is, is happy about that. Um, let's, um, instead, will you take just a minute and read this psalm on your own and answer the question on your own and then put some of that, the line that you think should be the tagline into the chat. Okay, and let's see the chat fill up with suggestions. You can also say why if you want to. Why is it? Psalm 30. It's um, on page uh, two uh, of the handout. Yeah, page two of the handout. Yeah, some say Hafachtum is Bidila Maholi. Zamri Lad Naikhasidav. It's great. Yeah, it, it, almost every single uh, <laughs> line is being taken. <laughs> Right, and and I think that there's, which is great, you know, because every line in Psalms is is a treasure. Mm 
Name each actor. Right. So amazing. Yeah, I I think um Mis Marshir Khan Katabaila David this 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 whole psalm um by the way, I love your suggestions. I'm just reading them as you're doing them. But every, every one of them is, every one of these lines describes also a process of turning over, just like we talked about in the other psalm, um, the sense of what, what is up goes down and what is down goes up. Um, and, and then with the kind of triumphant finish, um, yeah. Yeah, I like Janet's question. How do you decide what would you, you would choose as a refrain? Um, something that captures the spirit of the whole psalm. Yeah, I think that sounds right to me. Yeah, what what line captures it? You know, um, these these psalms were not written um, as um, they weren't written in poetic meter the way that that we have um, since the Arabic poetry. Um, and uh, there's a certain pulse to it, and there's repetitions and themes, and like, but it's not like da 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 da, da. you know. So it's not actually set up for for songs for modern songs. So we have to do a little bit of work to get there. So let me show you what I did, okay? And uh, this is a song that I'm that I've just been working on the last um, the last few weeks, um, last last maybe a few months. Um, and it's uh, if you scroll down to page three, you'll see you'll see what I how I did it. So what this means is by Arab Yalin Bechi in the nighttime, I went to sleep crying with Bechi, but in the morning, I woke up with uh, with joyous song with Rina with Rina. Okay, and then it and. And then it's, so that's in one line, that's like my, if I only had one line for a verse, that's what I would do. <laughs> okay, if I had two lines for a verse, I would say um, this one. Amarti Bishalvi, I said when I was content, when I was at peace. Bal emot leolam, I'll never be shaken. I'll never be shaken. Everything's always going to be just as good as this. Right, but then... God, he start up Hanecha, you you hid your face, and now I am I, I am trembling. Right? Scared and trembling. Haitinivhal. And then um, the last if I had four lines, um, I would go like this. Hafachta mis bedilamacholi pitachta sakiva tazreni simcha. Um God, you turned you turned my lament, my my um my mourning, my hesped, my eulogy. You turned my mispadi lemachol into a dance, into a circle dance. He said, you opened up my sad sack, pitachta saki, v'tazreni simcha, and you pulled out happiness, you pulled out simcha. Right? And why do you do it? Why does that happen? Lema'an yizamercha, so that I can sing to you, so that we can sing. Lema'an yizamercha chavod, you're... Your, to honor you, vilo yidom, and not, and not be silent, not be silenced. It says um, that uh, Aaron, when Aaron's, uh, when Aaron's um, sons were killed, um, that vayidom aharon, he was silent. But um, David doesn't think that way. He says, and Aaron was traumatized when that happened, but, and that's a natural response. But David says, no, no matter whether it's the ups or the downs, we sing, right? And that's the nature of the Psalms. That's the, the basic answer of all of the Psalms is no matter whether you're at the top of the game or at the bottom of the game in this moment, and we all go up and down either periodically or frequently, <laughs> um, that no matter where, when you're brokenhearted or you're full of joy, um, that, that, that our job is to sing. All right, and then so there's that up and down, and then I pull out the the my the tagline that the refrain that I chose was Elecha 
Hashem Ekra. Um, to you, I call out, right? So like despite all of the ups and downs, my summary of the psalm is we, we call out. Uh, we call out to, to God. And here's how I would sing it. Yalin Bechi Laboke Bina Aere Yalin Bechi Laboke Bina which is, has no words, just a little niggin. Um, will you sing that with me? da 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 oh, oh, again. da 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 oh, 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 Amarti Peshavi Balemot Leolam Histarta Panecha Ayesi Oh, 
nice. You have a second for a few questions? That'd be great. Thank you. So um, one question I saw was uh, when you when you write these melodies, before we ask you about the creative process, do you know when you're done that you've hit a melody that you think is going to be popular? In other words, when you're finished, do you, and, and do you guess right? So if you think about the most popular melodies that people sing of yours, are they the ones that you think are going to be the big ones? Do you know when you're done that this is one that's going to stick or does it sometimes surprise you? Um, thank you. It's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've written hundreds of melodies and, and, uh, you know, in, in some ways I haven't even written them. They've just kind of arrived and I've been a conduit and the ones that are, um, and everybody, different people connect to different things, you know, like, like Karen was saying about the major and the minor and the rhythmic and the free and the, the cantorial and the, the bluesy and the, the folky and like the, all these different things are part of my being. And sometimes I sing something and nobody notices it, but then three years later, some, or 10 years later, somebody comes up to me and says that one melody really touched me and I've already forgotten the melody altogether. <laughs> and, um, and, and, in other, in other cases, um, I, I will say that in terms of it being like your, the question about it being singable, the best way, and for those of you who are composing melodies yourself, the best way to do this, to compose is to actually compose with other people around. And, and I found that the, the nigu and the nigan is the communal Jewish art form, you know? And so if you actually can compose while well, there's people there, you'll find out really quickly whether it's singable because <laughs> because uh, people will just start to join you if it's if it's a if it's a niggin people will will join you know and it's been interesting during covid there hasn't been as much opportunity to just sit down and sing with people so some of the songs i've been writing have been slightly more more personal a little bit more um and i don't know if those are melodies that are going to be sung by lots of people or not uh just because i haven't been out there doing them you know, with, with groups. So. so do you, this is a hard question. Do you have a favorite Joey Weisenberg melody? That's your favorite. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, um, there are some melodies that it, they're usually, it's usually not about the melody for me. It's about, um, what happens when that melody is sung with people. You know, and that suddenly we're we're playing, we're we're singing, and then there's this magic which suddenly happens when when everybody starts to jump in, and and the whole the whole room alights with with harmony. Um, those are the things that I I really look forward to those moments. And again, they, in different communities, um, uh, tend to go for different things. And if if I'm in the the religious world, like the the from world, like the Orthodox world, there's going to be a certain a certain character of melody that will instantly take off. And if we're, you know, if I'm in California <laughs> and it, there's a different, there might be different thing. I'm not that I'm just joking, but um, there's, there's different, uh, different things that different, different groups, you know, feel, feel normal, feels normal for them. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the creative process. So when you, some of the questions I've seen are, do the, does this music just come to you at random time? Do you look like the, the, the we're just talking about this text from Psalm 30, I believe, right? Um, and are you, do you study the text and do you bring music to it? Or do you look at the text, the music comes to you? Does it come at random time? Do you wake up in the middle of the night in the morning and you now have that, the melody to go with the music? Yeah, well, there's two sides to music, um, to music writing. One is, is, is the craft and the other is the inspiration. And um, the craft is what you, as a musician or a composer, you work on and you, you, you work on your whole life to have the skill to arrange notes and to put them in different places and to change their orders and to understand them and to, you know, to futz with them. That's, that's, um, that's craft. And then inspiration is, is where something just drops in kind of complete for, and it just, it, it, it's just beautiful. It just, uh, it's a gift from the river of song, which is coming through our heads at all times. Right. And the more that I can be in the place of inspiration, the more happy I am. Um, and yet 
the um there are there for like for all of us there's moments where we have inspiration and other times where we have to rely on our on on what we've learned in our in 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 our craft right this goes for any field um any way of being as a person as well you know sometimes you we rely on the fixed processes that we've um put together that's the the keva the fixedness um the form and other times the inspiration the fire that's within the form just pours over the bounds and the cup overflows and that's the that's the inspiration and uh you know we'll we'll continue to uh to explore this next week um at the same time in the same station and i'm i'm just really delighted to to get to be with you and i feel you know this is a start and then next week i hope um if 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 you don't mind come back and we'll it, we'll have time to to sing more songs and also to to ask more questions and maybe there's a chance for to get it more into depth in a in a few places um i want to invite you all to um to to join um our online community of song with rising song and with um and joeyweisenberg.com there's tons of uh, uh hundreds of instructional videos and if you want to um subscribe and join us then you'll be able to ask more questions next week and join our process for the long term um, so it's really nice to be with you tonight and i look forward to us uh, to seeing you next time thank you thank you everybody for joining us and we have hands up but yeah i think we'll wait we'll keep you know we'll keep it interesting so come back with your questions next week one of the questions i will ask joey in a given time to think about is who his musical influences are so we can create our own playlist of the influences of Joey Weisenberg. And I can do that on Spotify and share that with people. And just, yeah, give us the ran the playlist. Who, who is in your head? Who are the musicians we should know about? And they don't have to be Jewish either. Just who are they? Um, and we'll talk about your book, um, The Torah of Music, maybe how it connects to what we're learning today. And I'll send people lots of um, uh, videos of some of my favorites and see if they're your favorites as well. And if people want to know how to get your music, we'll, we'll figure that all out. So you will get an email follow-up, Nancy Kaplan. Uh, do not worry. And Nancy, thank you for all the emails you send me uh, on uh, topics of interest. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I have to go home and have dinner with my family. They're looking for me. Susan Rickles, thank you for joining us. Nice to meet you. Uh, take care, everybody. Hopefully you uh, you can take something from our night of music. Um, and you can definitely look up online too. Go, you can Google Joey Weisenberg and, and look at uh, and some of the videos. But I'll send you some some great stuff as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joey. Bye. Thanks. Have a good, good night. Nice to see you all. Take care.